Let's talk about one of the worst cities to operate short-term rentals in 2023. Now, I'm only speaking from my experience because I had a property in this city that was losing $4,000 to $5,000 a month. This was actually a property that I purchased. My mortgage payment was $6,000 a month. This was a beautiful four-bedroom two and a half bathroom, 2,800 square foot house on almost three acres with a pool, a jacuzzi, and a mini playground for kids. And this is one of those areas that I consider a tertiary location because it was located in Joshua Tree, California, which is out in the desert. Now, back in 2020 and 2021, when people were sick and tired of being stuck at home, Everybody from California was going to Joshua Tree to have a staycation, a mini getaway because it was just a few hours of a drive. And at the time, there was a lot of demand for the supply that existed. And what happened is as soon as interest rates started going up, company profits start diminishing and a lot of companies start firing their employees and there's a layoff and it's the last phase of a recession, right, is unemployment. And obviously with people spending less money because they're making less money or people were fired and just all the things going on in the economy, a lot of people stopped traveling to these tertiary locations in the deserts like Joshua Tree. So you had the same amount of supply, but the demand dried up. And so my timing was as bad as it could because I acquired this property in the early summer of 2022. We went on and launched it towards the end of the summer after we furnished it, made some upgrades, and we finally closed escrow because it took forever. But from November, December, January, February, March, for almost six consecutive months, we lost an average of four to 5000 per month on this property. So again, the timing was just wrong. Now, I believe that had I acquired this property one, two, three years before, we would have made about $5,000 a month in net cash flow because the property was beautiful and it was on a hillside. So there was a beautiful view and we were only a few miles from the Joshua Tree National Park. So if you're looking at investing, whether it's purchasing, subleasing, or managing in Joshua Tree, California, my recommendation would be hold out. Wait for the recession to pass by, wait for the demand to grow again, and then go into this market. I believe a lot of tertiary locations like Joshua Tree are the ones that are struggling the most today. Personally, the areas where I am thriving and my students are thriving and other people that I know on social media that are thriving are in primary locations. For example, if we look at California, some of the cities that are just doing great today are like San Diego, California, Los Angeles, California, right? And again, even within those cities, you want to be close to the downtowns where you have the conferences, the concerts, weddings, events, and year-round year activity going on or near the theme parks or near the beaches. If you are in places like Miami or Orlando, same thing. You want to be near the beaches. You want to be near Disney World, near the theme parks, near the downtowns, wherever there is a large population and year-round activity, that is where you want to be. Same thing for Texas. You want to be around Austin. You want to be around Dallas, near lakes, near the downtowns where there's large populations and year-round activity going on. These are what I call primary locations. Typically, you have high rents if you are renting or high mortgages because purchase prices are high. Now, if you stick to these strong primary locations where you have large populations, you're going to do extremely well. Like I have properties that are still making $2,000 to $5,000 a month in profit in areas like I just described. And again, these are the primary locations. And then if you drive 30 minutes to an hour east, or west from these main cities, you end up typically in a secondary location. And if you keep driving another 30 minutes to 60 minutes, you end up in a tertiary location like Joshua Tree, California. So you wanna be very selective in 2023 as to the types of cities and locations that you go into. Now, another thing as far as choosing a location and what types of areas to stay away from, when you are using the AirDNA Rentalizer, you want to make sure that you subtract about 15% of whatever projection they are giving you because the numbers in 2023 are slightly lower than they were in 2022. 
So if the projection is 100,000, don't use the 100,000, use 85,000. If you haven't yet liked this video, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate if you like this video and make sure you guys check out more of my videos. But before we finish, um, just to kind of wrap it up, guys, um, you want to be very selective. In 2020, 21, even in 2022, you could have, you know, thrown a pin at the map anywhere in the U.S., right? Because I mainly focus on the U.S. market. And you could have done well almost anywhere. But in 2023, you got to be very selective with the types of cities that you launch in. So if you want more help with that, click on the links down, not above, but below in the description. You can book a call with my team and we can see if we can help you build your six-figure business. Before you guys go anywhere, make sure you guys check out one of my other videos here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.